Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. So, so what, why are we here? Why are we here watching the show? Why are we here doing the show? Why, why are we in you know, this human life? Why are we in this human body? W what is it that we as a, as a species, we indiv individually came here to do? You know, I, I know for a fact that that's a question that's, in a certain sense, in all our hearts. You know, whether it comes up in the middle of the night sometimes when we wake up, whether it comes in, you know, when we go to church or synagogue or uh, temple or wherever we go. But something in us, what am I, what, why am I here and what am I here to do? I mean, those are you know, old age questions. And, and in a certain sense, they trouble us as human beings. They confuse us. We're not really sure. I mean, the, the, the standard fare from the society is fame and fortune and heroics and sports and music and you know, maybe family and, and success and, you know, a certain amount of philanthropy and a certain amount of balance in those. But somehow for most of us, at some point, be it in a dream, be it at night, be it in these holy places, be it at the beach, be it in, in the woods, we know that there's a deeper answer. We know that there's a real question that needs answering in each of our lives. There is something that in one way or another, most of us are missing a good part of our day and night and day and night and busyness and, and work and play and family and religion and country. That there's a root, that there's a heart, that there's a, 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 a depth, a grandness, a vastness, an unconditional quality an infinite, an inclusion that somehow as human beings in our day-to-day -day activities and our day-to-day -day lives, we miss over and over again, and we know it. We know it. We know that there is a oneness, a connection, a recognition of our perfection, of what God is, of what each of us is. 
in what Jesus said when he said the Father and I are one, the Goddess and I are one, that there is an experience that in this human life, each one of us taking a breath at this moment on this planet can experience. And until we have that experience, until we have it literally over and over and over and over and over, and that recognition that the Father and I, the God are so, and I are one, that question, who am I, what am I here to do, haunts us. And then once that experience becomes real, becomes realized, becomes cemented, becomes true, the Goddess, the Father and I are one, then everything changes. Once that question, that deep root heart base question gets answered, everything is different. And that's what all the teachers and masters and those who had that experience have devoted their lives to sharing that, to feeling it over and over again and sharing it over and over again in whatever way that was appropriate for them. And that's, you know, why we do these bridging shows, why we come together, why we do a healing art project to bring that vibration, that energy of unconditional love, of the infinite, of inclusiveness, of, of what we call the oneness just to enliven it and enliven it and enliven it and bring it out so everyone can have that experience, so that the energies on this planet can be so clearly about our connection rather than our separation that, you know, love will fill the air, really. That's, you know, it's a song, and <laughs> you know, it's a you know. And we all know it in our hearts, we all know it in our root, we all know it. in the depth of our being. And again, tonight's guest travels the world, writes and paints and journals to bring that experience into reality. Whitney Ferre is a spiritual teacher, she's an author, and she believes the key to our evolution, revolution, lies within our creative mind. That when we embrace and amplify our creative power, that we can truly align with our higher self, that we can come in touch with that oneness, we can come in touch with that infinite, with that feeling of inclusion. She's written two book books on creativity, including The Artist Within, A Guide to Becoming Creatively Fit. And just recently she's launched two incredible projects, The Spirit Project 2012 and The Journey Retreats. And Whitney's life is dedicated to that. And it's a great honor for us to have her here. As you'll see, she just, she vibrates that. She, you can just feel it when she talks, when she just bees. And so it's a great honor. And as most of you know, we usually show art videos and music videos to have another spoke on the wheel of the way that that infinite, that inclusion can be uh, experienced, that, that can be uh, manifested. And we have two beautiful um, music videos today. Uh, Lesia, uh, she and I wrote the lyrics. It's called Oh Happy Day. And then we have a promo, a short bridging promo that we did a while back that's a beautiful promo. And then Nedad Bak, uh, Can We Go Higher? He's a Croatian national who wrote this incredible song about the, the horrors of war and can we go higher. It, you know, was going on in Bosnia and Croatia and Serbia back in the day. And God knows there are wars going on as we speak, as we watch this. And as most of you know also, we're in the middle of an extraordinary international healing art project. It came as a dream, it came as a vision, as a healing, as an acupuncture, as a healing the heart of the planet, as a reconnection of that separation, that, that illusionary separation that we feel. And the, the guidance we were given is that if we here at Bridging with the to reach out all over the world through cable stations and satellite TV all over Europe and all the, the internet video the, on YouTube and Vimeo and all the others, that we reach people all over the world to invite anyone who wants to produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, any style, any format, 
any uh, skill level, any age, uh, get it to us here in California. We'll put it on the bridging shows. We have an unbelievably powerful and beautiful International Healing Art Project site, heaventoearthart.com, heaven, T-O-Earth, A-R-T.com. And we have art project shows and we have exhibits and we hope to have these incredible paintings in, in hospitals and museums and galleries all over the world so people can feel their incredible power and their incredible love. And as of this point, we've received over 400 pieces, all new original pieces based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth that have come in literally from all over the globe from the ages of 2 to 92. Uh, acrylics, oils, sculptures of all sizes, glass, jewelry, um, collages, just, uh, just everything you can imagine. If you want to be inspired and uplifted, go to Heaven to Earth Art and go page after page. We literally have over 400 pieces that have already come in. So beautiful, so powerful, all with the intention of being part of that grand healing, that healing the heart of the planet. And tonight we have, you know, two beautiful pieces. One is by Whitney, beautiful, powerful lotus piece. And the other piece, uh, someone who's done four pieces for bridging, Larkin Collar, uh, did this piece, Bridges. I think we've shown one of his pieces before. Another amazing, amazing piece. So, you know, for the next 55 minutes or so, there's an opportunity to experience love in a lot of forms, an opportunity to experience the infinite in a lot of forms, the opportunity to experience inclusion and unconditional love. So join us, join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first Lessie O Happy Day video, and then we'll have Whitney with us, and art, and more music, and more art, and you know, love in motion. So join me in a short uh, meditation. Thank you. So the first video is uh, Leslie. It's a song Leslie and I wrote a while back. It's called Oh Happy Day. And at the end of it, just keep watching. There's a beautiful little animated promo we did a while back. It's from the Leslie of Bridging Heaven and Earth CD. Uh, oh Happy Day. Enjoy.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So oh, happy day. Wouldn't that be nice if we all really felt that way? And the incredible piece of art you see in between Whitney and I is the Lotus Energy Bridging Heaven and Earth that Whitney manifested for the International Healing Art Project. Why don't you talk a little about that, what it meant to you and how it manifested and all that? Well, the Lotus has been a, a dominant symbol for me the last 12 months or so, and uh, you see them around a lot now, right? You go into the stores, you see Lotus flowers, and the symbol and the energy of the Lotus is all about reminding us that in order to bloom, in order to blossom into this magnificent flower, um, you have to have your roots in the muck. And so it's kind of reminding us that from the, the challenges and the obstacles and the hardships, that's where we're getting our nutrients in order to grow and to bloom. So, um, so I, for me, it felt very um, connected to your Bridging Heaven and Earth art project because, you know, when we can remember, right, that the, that the muck that we have to wade through in this lifetime is actually helping us get to heaven, right, the bloom. Um, it puts things in perspective. So, uh, and when I paint, I love to layer lots of color and texture, uh, which is, I think, so symbolic of our life in general, that it's the layers and layers and layers of experience and, and uh, knowledge that, that make it so rich and give it so much depth. And so, um, so the whole piece was really fun to create. And, you know, the drips that, you know, typically you, you, know, you drip something, and you're like, oh, no. And, but the drips, you know, we made that work and, and add to the piece. So it was, it was really fun to create. And, um, and it was a beautiful meditation the whole time I was painting it to really think of that bridge, right? And, and for me, art making has always been that bridge as well between heaven and earth. So thank you for the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I think that's part of the plan for more and more people thank to you. have that gift and that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So... At the open, I talked about that you really focus on creativity and the connection between creativity and, in essence, love, and, in essence, finding out who we really are and what we're here to do. Why don't you talk about that a little? 
Well, so, uh, so this all started for me back in 1996, and um, I was four years out of college. I had grown up believing that I had not inherited that artistic creative gene. You know, I didn't think I could paint or draw. I was very envious of all my friends who could and was always looking over their shoulder or show me what you're painting. I wish I could do that. And so it was really a dramatic experience when uh, I was really given this idea to open up a place like a, a gym for your right brain, uh, for your right brain muscle where people could come and make art in order to strengthen their mental muscle so that they could create change in the art that is their life. And I opened this art center and literally I didn't even know that there were the specific colors of paint that you you know use in an art class to mix, you know, the colors, the basic colors that are used to mix colors and I was ordering oil paints for the oil painting class and I ordered the most ridiculous assortment of colors just trying to order what I thought was a you know nice sounding group and and so I really knew nothing um, but because I now owned an art center I learned very quickly and I had other teachers in there teaching the art classes and and uh, within about a year I was teaching a lot um, especially painting because I found that I was better at coaching people through those early stages and people came in with so much fear and, and a lot of the adults came in with um, fear that had been there you know, for years and years, and they just had stories of this desire they had to paint and create, but you know, they'd had the art teacher say something, or the parent that said, oh, you'll never make any money at it, or you know, just all these kind of uh, words that discouraged them. And so a lot of the art teachers who had grown up painting, been to art school, didn't understand the fear that they were bringing into it. And so I started teaching because I felt like I was a better coach is what it really felt like that there was really that that element of coaching people through the fear and kind of easing them into it. And and that has been the most fun uh, thing to see people's eyes light up and realize I can do this, right? And so what I learned really quickly was that physiologically in our minds, you know, when we when we conquer a major fear that we've had for so long, our mind goes back to all the other uh, ideas or thoughts in that part of our brain, right, where we had also had all these other things I've always wanted to do but didn't think I could. So for me, my students would come back to art class and say, guess what I did? I've been meaning to do it forever, and I finally did that. And it's because they had physiologically strengthened or created new neural pathways in this right hemisphere to balance the left brain voice, which is fear-based and ego-centered, and past and future-oriented. So it's the voice that's going to remind you of you know, what that art teacher said or the friend that laughed at your drawing that one time. And so when people become present, they connect to that part of their mind that believes they can do anything. And, and so along those same lines, that right hemisphere is, is where we are connected to our higher self and to spirit and, and to that voice that is like, you know, create a way. We've got nothing to fear. You know, there's no fear there. There's only love and oneness and connectedness. And, and so along the way, with my own creative journey, as well as a lot of my clients, there, um, there also was revealed a very strong uh, spiritual journey. And, and, you know, when you connect people to that, it's, it's powerful. And so, so how do we go from fear-based to be creatively fit, to be... When, you know, when you were talking, I mean, the vision I was getting was like opening the door to freedom, opening mm -hmm. the door to, mm -hmm. to openness. Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk about how you see that process working in a human being, in yourself and others you've seen? Right. So, you know, so this is, this is basically what I think why we're here, right, is to overcome fear, to learn to live independent from fear. And so what happens with the art journal or the canvas is that becomes a vehicle or almost like a mirror that reflects back to us um, exactly the part of the creative process where we meet that fear or resistance. And any problem solving, any ideas people have that they want to make happen, that's all part of the creative process, right? And so um, in the Creatively Fit online program that I have, um, we start with just making our mark on paper, 
and it can be a piece of computer paper and a ballpoint pen. And one of the most powerful exercises that we do is called the scribble drawing. And it requires no drawing ability. And they're almost so intentionally simple, all of these exercises, so that your ego can't attach to any reason why you would possibly be spending time doing this. Like, why would you be scribbling? You've got much more productive things to do. And so it has to check out. Right? And when your left brain checks out, your right brain is able to check in and it's like, been, you know, it's been trying to get your attention, right? And it's got these, you know, universal truths and intuition and insight that comes from outside of ourselves um, that is there to guide us. So the scribble drawing, for example, is kind of like the cloud game, you know, where you look at the clouds and, and see what you see. So you just draw a scribble real quickly and then see what it reminds you of. And I do it with groups where we pass it around and you get the scribble back or you finish your scribble and, and you write down like the first five words that come to mind. And in there, there is a message. And I've had some amazing experiences, especially with the collaborative scribble because it's so dramatic. Other people have been drawing on your drawing and you get it back and there's such significance for you in there. So, so in other words, the, the art making becomes like um, the exercise, just like the physical exercise. And every time you um, engage your creative side, your spirit, with the draw, whether it's drawing or painting, um, it's like you tune in to that frequency, right? Or you raise your vibration to a level that you can then hear and understand um, from a different perspective than ego. And it's about balance, right? It's about balancing the two. And so, um, it's been pretty dramatic to watch people uh, who've spent, you know, decades or most of their lives saying, oh, I can't do this. And, and I think some of that resistance is because, you know, ego knows that, well, as soon as you start painting, you're going to connect to that intuitive side, that spirit, your higher self. And then I'm going to have to take a, at least a side seat, right? It kind of wants all and, your and attention. And the whole bubble bursts. I mean, you know, the, one of the weirdest things that people say is, I'm not the type of person who, you know, up until this moment, you could tell a history, but in this next moment, mm -hmm. we're capable of almost anything and we don't know really what's going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. So, and then, you, but your thing takes them step by step into an openness to that. Well, it's taking action, right? So, uh, I mean, it's wonderful to listen and to read you know, but to actually be able to take action and then see the difference that you've made right there on the canvas, it becomes a living, breathing symbol of your ability to create change. And hope is directly tied to the confidence you have in your ability to create change. And, and then as you exercise this part of your mind more, and the art making is a way to do that, um, your intuition becomes stronger. Um, coincidences increase. And you begin to trust it more. You begin to trust it more. And so all of a sudden you've got, you know, a whole new uh, kind of set of tools in your tool belt. Right, and it's much more um, expansive. It feels a lot better. A lot better than that linear, logical mind. And 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 again, the goal is you know to have both because we do live in this world right now. We have to bridge. Heaven we have to bridge. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, so, I think the biggest uh, thing that people realize uh, that they have to detach from is that need to produce you know, to produce something worthy, right? And to just understand that. And what worthy is. What worthy is, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so it's not about um, creating the finished piece that looks so great. It's about everything that goes into it along that way. You know, it's the journey, right? Not the destination. And, and the art making, um, for me, is what I use because so many people are, oh, I can't even draw a straight line. You know, I can't even draw a stick figure. And so it, I found it goes like laser beam to that space, you know, that part of our mental landscape where we've chunked all those other things that we can't do. And it really blasts it open as soon as people realize, wow, so what else have I been telling myself I can't do? Well, you want to start the list. Right, exactly. Most of us have a list. 
<laughs> it's like, oh my Huge. God. Huge. Like, and then it is a lot like getting physically fit in that, you know, it's yeah, you it's a process. You build, and, uh, you build, and, and like you said, your intuition gets stronger. You trust it more. You take bolder action, and then that bolder action leads to new opportunities, right? It's like the fork in the road is so close at the beginning, but in the end, you know, dramatically different destinations. Yeah, you're a different person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have this expression, whatever you think you are, you're more. Oh, that's good. Isn't that good? I like so, that. I mean, you know, once those dominoes start falling, you know, you're less apt to think of yourself as something that's limiting. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that opens a lot up. Right. <laughs> it's like I've done a lot of work with, um, you know, writers and writers groups and things like that. And so for them, you know, it's all about writer's block which I think most of us can identify with writer's block, even if it's not about writing, right? right? I mean, I hear so much people saying they feel stuck. And and that, I guarantee, the stickiness is attached to a fear, and it's keeping you from moving towards what you want. And so... Um, or we have expectations of being at a certain place, when, and we're not really experiencing the beauty of the journey as well. So, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. It's tricky that way. Right. So the more time you can spend, like you said, in the awareness where, you know, there is no fear, everything's connected, everything exists to support you, then you find yourself taking different action. And, and, and that's exciting. That's really exciting. No, it's extra, you know, I mean, just like a different person. I mm -hmm. mean, the metaphor we use is like taking, you know, weights, rocks out of a backpack. Right. And you wonder, why am I standing up? Why am I standing up straighter? You know, why isn't the society you know, doing what it does to me as much, you're mm -hmm. not as available. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, you're, and then you're starting to lift off. Right. You know, people talk about it as ascending or, but really it's just you're getting all that weight, those concepts, those I can't, I'm not the type of person who, <laughs> and it changes everything. Exactly. Well, I talk a lot about, you know, your higher self is infinitely creative. Like your higher self is not up there saying, oh yeah, I can't even draw a straight line. And so as long as you're saying that, you're creating like a static. Um, you know, there's not going to be a, a, as clear a, a connection, and so You're I do. You're going to be frozen, right? And so I do have a vision, <laughs> right? That, that and it could be really soon, I think, where it becomes like blasphemy to say I'm not creative. You know, like if someone said I'm not creative, people will be like, oh, "What are you saying? Don't say that." No, I do you, that now. you solve it problems me all out. the time. It freaks me out. <laughs> you know, and that's what we do. With, I mean, that was why we wanted the, the whole vibration of the art project to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. That there's no skill level. We say that over and over again. Right. It's just about. You have to say that, yeah. You know, just putting out that manifestation, that intention. Exactly. And it's, you know, you, I mean, you see, and then people produce things that go, oh my God, <laughs> I didn't know I was an artist. Was, right. you, know, don't, you know, don't define yourself as that. You'll be better off even, you know, so. Exactly. Yeah, those definitions can really yeah. limit. But, yeah, they just put us in a straitjack. I mm -hmm. wonder, why, why do I feel constricted? You think? Right, <laughs> yeah, right, so. right. So, and I think it's about unpacking creativity, right? right? And yeah, unpeeling the onion, whatever. Right, and just realizing that it's not, you know, it's not about making art. And for right. me, it's not about making art. It's what that you are then art leads to. Thing. Everything's art, you know? We're meant to live our life as art. Um, and I think, you know, we talk about the illusion you know, and life being a dream. Like we've created this as a piece of art and there needs to be contrast in the light places and the dark places. That was one of the biggest things when I started teaching painting, it was, you know, I'd say things like, okay, so if it gets too busy, you know, you've got to create some, some open space for the eye to rest. I'd be like, it's just like life. You know, if you've got a lot going on, you've got to create the open spaces and then it's like it really is just like life. Like the, the, the secrets and the principles that we use to create a successful piece of art are the same things that we can use to create a successful. Yeah, like you said earlier, what's not connected? Right. <laughs> so right. when everything's connected, everything's connected. Exactly. So, you know, we take lessons from everything. Mm -hmm. And then we're feeling infinite and inclusive. And, you know, the Father and I, the Goddess and I are one. And then, you know, what's the limit? What's the, you know... Right. And then there's the element of, you know, color has vibration, um, symbols, you know, Jung talked about symbols are the bridge between the conscious and the unconscious mind. So, so I would believe, too, that the things that we're attracted to, to paint, 
right? We're attracted to because spirit is trying to get our attention, right? Like it, you're saying, we want you to paint lotuses, Whitney, because you're going to need to be focused on the muck being a positive thing in your life coming up, you know, which that could right. be true. And so. you were telling me during the break that there were, you know, you're giving symbols to people. We'll talk about the next mm -hmm. section, but let's get to the second video. It's a beautiful video. Again, can we go higher? Uh, Nenad Bak, uh, he's a Croatian uh, national native who's now living in, in New York. Uh, his website's nenadbak.com, N-E-N-A-D-B-A-C-H.com. And he wrote this song, Can We Go Higher, uh, during the war in Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, you know, to raise awareness of just the horrors going on there and the horrors of war, you know, in general. So it's a really powerful piece. Uh, can we go higher? You know, we probably can, so enjoy.
Yeah, beautiful video. Can we go higher? Nenad Bak, again, nenadbak.com, beautiful, Croatian. You know, war is crazy everywhere. And it just hurts and hurts and, you know, let's, let's see if we can stop it for a while. So in the incredible piece you're seeing in between Whitney and I is called Bridges. It's a uh, Larkin collar. Uh, he's done four incredible pieces. If you go to the Heaven to Earth Art and go to the artist page and go down uh, by first letter alphabetically, you'll see four by Larkin. We've shown others before. Incredible artist. He's from uh, Felton, California in the USA. His website's a powerofnow.org and by divinegrace.com, uh, powerofnow.org, and by divinegrace.com. And he says that all his paintings and other creative manifestations are about awakening, about love, about oneness. But if you just go and see these, all of these pieces, all 400 and some odd pieces, of all different shapes, sizes, everyone is welcome. It's about the energy of the infinite, of inclusiveness, of love. So everyone is welcome to join us and we'd be honored and you know as Whitney was saying the experience most people have of manifesting these pieces is so beautiful and so enlivening and so inspiring and the more people involved the better the healing. So join us in the International Healing Art Project. HeavenToEarthArt.com. Go. It'll, it'll really help, help your day in whatever day you're having. If you have the time to really rest and relax and go through these pages. Very, very powerful and inspiring. So, speaking of powerful and inspiring, you know, more with Whitney. So uh, you've just started two really incredible projects. Why don't you talk about them and let people know what you're doing. And, and then also we talked right before the break about symbols and how you use those. So those three things, I think, are what people really like to hear about. Okay. Well, I have a, a whole selection of online programs at creativelyfit.com. And in 2012, we started a, a new format. Uh, it was called The Spirit Project. And it's a monthly uh, program where each month there's kind of a simple theme or meditation. And then I have guest contributors contributing articles and information and then we have a creative element with each one and so 2012 was about really stepping into the reality of us as spiritual beings having a human experience and then 2013 is the purpose project and so that's now okay why are we here which you were talking about really at the beginning of the show and so um, that's an amazing program we have a private Facebook group that's really dynamic and there's uh, the monthly ebook as well as photography prompts and in all different ways again to engage our awareness on different levels and to remember the things that bring us joy and bring us um, kind of elicit that passion and that gets us really excited and how we can share that with more people so and then um, the other uh, event that uh, began in 2012 is the journey retreat which is about uh, creativity and spirituality and uh, we had the first journey retreat in April of 2012 outside of Portland, Oregon. And then we did the second one just this past December over the 12, 21, 12 weekend in Joshua Tree. And what that has really um, grown into is an immersive retreat experience where we have um, typically about 15 different presenters that are coming to share their particular um, teaching and healing practices around creativity and spirituality. The community of people that gather there are um, really amazing, spirit-led, heartfelt people. It, it, none of us want to leave at the end, you know. It's just, it feels like heaven being there with so many people who are supportive and positive and compassionate and just being authentic. You know, really, it's about being authentic, our truest selves. And, and I think that's the goal. For everybody right now, right? And so, um, so then along those lines, what I was um, being led to do starting about a year and a half ago, I actually had a very lucid dream where uh, myself and my creatively fit coaches were um, prescribing symbols to people. 
So, you know, depending on the particular challenge or goal that someone had, we would um, be able to provide them with an image or a symbol that they could draw and paint and keep around in their space in order to almost like download information, right? And so um, I started and my coaches started working with the symbols last year and then just this fall I started offering these sacred symbol prescriptions for people. And um, what's amazing about this, it, it, you know, again, it, it's, it seems so obvious almost, but, you know, our logical mind, the left brain, um, the ego, which is fear-based, communicates to us mostly through the written language. You know, it, it's things that we read, you know, knowledge, facts, things like that. Um, and the truth is, is that we're processing so much information visually. And so these symbols are, are symbols that have been around for tens of thousands of years that as human beings we have carved into structures and into artwork and painted and created since almost the beginning of time. And they have an energy. Carl Jung says we, uh, our psyche has a history. So when, when I prescribe these symbols, um, what it does for people is it, it's, it's almost like providing um, wisdom and information from spirit that comes to them intuitively, right? It's not like, you know, it spits out this, you know, memo, so to speak, but being in the presence of that symbol creates a different awareness and gives you access to intuition and wisdom. It's like a visual nudge to remember, like remember this, remember these universal principles or these facts or, you know, this symbol is being given to you to, um, to provide kind of a, a visual anchor um, or a focal point or a meditation at this point in your life. So it's just instead of words, it's a symbol. And, um, and it communicates to us on so many different levels, right? It's a, it's a much more kind of rounded awareness than kind of a more linear approach. And, um, and that's been really powerful work. And it's interesting, whenever I prescribe someone a symbol, you know, I, I get it. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's always that little hesitation right before I give it to them, right? Or if it's kind of an intense symbol. And, and always I'm met with like, wow, that is so amazing because here's what's going on or here's what this is speaking to me. And, um, and so, you know, the things that we're attracted to visually, um, if you look around your house, the shapes that you have around your house, you know, if you have lots of circles or spirals, that would be different than lots of geometric shapes. That's all reflective of kind of our unique personality, you know, our, our, our spiritual awareness, our higher self communicates through these different visual mediums. And we've disconnected from that because we've tapped into art as product. Right? And, and we go outside and, and buy them instead of creating them ourselves. So it's reconnecting to this um, relationship. It's like remembering a whole other language. And the symbols hold just volumes within just one symbol. Right? And we were talking earlier about where you get these symbols from. And why don't you give some examples? And then you were telling me about one example of someone who was going through a certain thing in her life and the vulture came up, which is a, a somewhat could be looked at as a heavier type Right, that was one of those moments where I was or, like, oh, I have to tell her, you know, like, here's so your you, symbol. Right. Um, well, so right now I predominantly use a book um, by Karen Spistra called The Hunab Ku, and it's 77 Sacred Symbols for Balancing um, Body and Spirit. And they were selected based on um, their historical significance. Throughout and, all throughout religions history. and Yeah, history. there's Native American symbols, right. there's symbols from the Middle East and Europe and, you know, the Celtic symbols, all different symbols. And, um, and so I use um, a pendulum and it gives me the symbol. And so a woman who's in my Creatively Fit Coaching training program, who's in um, Beirut, Lebanon, actually, um, her symbol came up, the vulture, which is the symbol of death. So, uh, so yeah, I was a little, you know, I'm Skyping with her. I'm like, okay, so. <laughs> here's what I came up with. Here's your symbol, you know. And she immediately was like, wow, you know, it, because the death is about also rebirth, right, right. and transformation. And, and she said, she goes, I've really felt like there are things I need to let go of and new 
places I need to step into. And, uh, and so it resonated with her right away. And, and then I spoke with her just a couple days ago. And she's like, okay, since we last spoke, I have been so sick. And during the whole time, I'm just focused on how can I release you know, kind of let die, whatever needs to let die, and come out of this. She goes, I felt like, you know, the phoenix rising um, coming out because she was so sick, and she's got this huge um, project going on in Beirut right now um, around dance, Nia dancing. And, and um, so it's been a really incredible experience working with the symbols and, and understanding how, um, you know, this is ancient wisdom, right? We have access to so much more than just what we personally have read or studied, and that it's just as valid. This intuitive wisdom is just as valid as you know, the things that we've gotten degrees in or something. So the symbols are a portal for that. Yeah, and once the portals open, like we were talking earlier, I mean, a lot of dominoes start falling. And it, you know, further up and further in, it just, you know. Exactly. So why don't you talk about the experiences you know, you've had in that way and clients have had where once that momentum shifts right. and you're not so much thinking whatever you think you are, you're more, but you just, those walls are breaking down. Exactly. So talk to them. So, well, there's, um, you know, and one of the things that I'm always explaining to people too is they, they're, the changes that you make can be small changes, they can be big changes, you know, it doesn't have to be you know, quitting your job and starting a new business or something. The first day. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's a little, little abrupt in my thing. You might have to back paddle. Exactly. Back paddle a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. It's like how I teach people how to paint. It's the layers. And when you just take it one step at a time. So when you become tapped into this, um, this creative spirit and um, you're more present, what you can do is you're able to make decisions about small steps that you can take in the present moment, not based on your history or baggage, you know, or fear of what might happen in the future. It's what can I do right now that will get me one step closer? And so, um, and, and then there's also the element of understanding that we are the artists of our lives, that we create a reality. And so all of a sudden then, things that you don't, you know, like a schedule. For example, I had a, um, a woman who was a nurse and when she first started taking art classes, she would come in and, oh, I have this horrible schedule and I never have a routine and, you know, it was lots of complaining. And, um, at, you know, at some point, maybe three, four months in, she had created more space in her home to make art and then she had realized that she could work you know, part-time at two hospitals, actually make more money, work less, and have a more regular schedule. And she, so she started creating just these little changes. So at first it was within her existing career. Um, then she started traveling more. I, I saw her one day and she was tan. Oh, I've just gotten back from two weeks in Australia. Like, really? You know, and she was excited and happy. And then um, she ended up falling in love with a, um, a little Victorian house on the coast in North Carolina, and she moved there. And now she's a full-time artist. Wow. So, you know, it, and this was over several years, right? right. But again, you detach um, from the voice that's fear-based that is there literally to keep you from any change. And, and you tap into the side that, feels free and safe and that love exists everywhere and everything's connected so you can take steps forward. It's a lot safer there when you feel that way. Exactly, right? You can you can take different action. So, and I know um, other examples, I know for myself, um, you know, owning my own businesses, uh, when my book came out and I started traveling nationally to promote that, um, there's a constant balance between having to kind of step up and, and uh, you know, take on new challenges or, or different, you know, I do a lot of corporate work um, as well, corporate creativity, and, and there's always that first time where someone says, can you do this? And you say yes. And I guess I'll be figuring that out, right? right? <laughs> I've never done it before, but I'm sure I can. <laughs> right, on a plane somewhere, right. I am already doing it. Right, so, exactly. Um, so you take bolder action and you get used to doing that. And so what happens really then is, is your ego is 
able to take a step back and instead of it being like the weight of the, the world on your shoulders, I have to make this happen, you can really kind of open up and, and allow things to happen. And so that, that's, you know, that shift can make a big difference in things that um, people do. I mean, I remember one woman just talking about how she was, um, was delegated to take over, you know, the head of some committee at work or something, and and she said how she called one of the local um, news anchors um, and ended up being able to work with them to collaborate with them. And she goes, I never would have done that before because you know my ego would have kept me like, who am I? Like, why would they talk to me? And because she had done this creativity work, she's like, I'm just going to call, and it led to yeah, all right. kinds of different right. opportunities. If you could take no for an answer, you could ask any question. Exactly. But ego doesn't want to hear no. But the rest of you, you know. Right. What have I got to lose mostly? Right. Because once we break it down, the things that we really want to do are the things that bring us joy. If you're not doing them, it's because of some sort of fear. And usually when you realize that, you're able to understand that that's, I don't really have to be afraid of that. Right? So, and in every moment, if we can really bring ourselves to live moment to moment to moment, all that stuff doesn't exist even. Right. And really for most people, you know, like I said, so many people tell me that they feel stuck. And if you can do something differently, you're going to get different results. All right, and we're, getting to, we're coming to the end of these different results. Okay. So we certainly hope that, and I'm sure that people really had an extraordinary experience, you know, just to open the door to love, really. Right. And through art, through creativity, you know, any of that. So if you want any information about Whitney, her book, her workshops, uh, you know, uh, her websites, anything, Call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Good night.